Today, we're going to be talking about Kowloon Generic Romance, a manga that's not generic at all. So that was a fucking lie. And I already know what you're going to say. You're going to say, Squire, well, you are- I don't understand how you expect us to like this manga. Like, this is- it's just pretty boring. I'm not going to lie, dude. Like, like, oh, 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 damn. All right, Squire. Oh, okay. I see, I see where you're going with this. I'm, all right. Kowloon Generic Romance is not generic at all, but it quite literally is the prettiest and most attractive manga I've ever seen. But before we get into that, I ask you guys to please subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subs by the end of the year, and I could use all the help as possible. If you enjoy these manga analysis videos, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff. Now, back to the video. The story has two main characters, Kujidai and Kudo, and the two of them work in a real estate office in Hong Kong. Wait, is that Salt Bay? And the beginning chapters really just focus on the two's daily lives. Now, looking from a physical standpoint, these characters are ah uh, ah uh, Kujirai Reiko. I shouldn't have to explain why this character is so amazing. Just just look at her. Short hair, glasses, uh, uh fashion. I love Chinese dresses. <laughs> oh, hold on a minute, she's thirty. As for Kudo, look guys, I gotta preface this by saying I am not gay. So you can take your assumptions and get the hell out of here. But let me just say, he's a good-looking guy. He's got the hair. He's got the face. He's got the positive attitude, the broad shoulders, oh daddy! <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is that the characters are very attractive. The topic of nostalgia also comes up a lot in this manga. Kudo is the kind of guy that really loves his feeling of nostalgia. God, I wish that was me. Hey, which one though? Therefore, he always goes back to his same routines and same habits as before. Every day he eats at the same exact restaurant. I mean, if it's Panda Express, I can't blame him. Kujidai, on the other hand, is a person who always likes to try new things and explore. She's always trying out different stuff and doesn't really like to be chained to the past. And that's how the story and overall mystery is interesting introduced into this manga. You see, Kujidai and Kudo have a very, very odd relationship. The two of them go out and eat together every single day, and they seem to have a very intimate connection, despite just being friends. Yeah guys, that's... they're just friends. Starting off, these characters share a somewhat platonic relationship, nothing really romantic. But that doesn't stop the fact that Kudo's gonna swoop in and do all of these crazy moves on Kujidai, like a player. Kudo gets up close and personal and pulls off all these intimate moves all over the place. And we begin to find out that Kudo knows something that Kujidai doesn't. It turns out in the past he was dating a girl that looked just like Kujidai. Same face, same hair, same uh, fashion, same habits, same workplace, same name. It's almost as if that girl he was dating in the past is that same person now. Except maybe she lost her memories or got cloned or something happened. That's the mystery of the manga, by the way. And thus, Kujidai's core internal conflict comes down to her essentially trying to distance herself from this past version of herself that Kudo is familiar with. It's a it's a bit of an odd situation. Not, not generic, I would say. Now, I will admit, the story part of this manga is an incredibly, magnificently amazing, but, like, it does take a little bit to get in there. It's a bit of a slow burn. A lot of those beginning chapters are, like I said, just slice of life. The upside is that while you're working your way through this slow burn story, you get to appreciate Mayuzuki Jun's amazing art style. I hope, I think you, I think you might have noticed by now. Mayuzuki Jun, the same author who wrote Love is Like After the Rain, Koyo wa Ameagari no Yoni. And in case you were wondering, yes, I did watch that anime more times than I can even count. Nobody asked. Anyway, the point is this person knows how to draw some incredible character designs. Combine that with some beautiful and authentically drawn backgrounds, and Mayuzuki creates this this jovial and just comedic and also very real feeling atmosphere in the story. Oh, and then all the characters are just drop dead gorgeous. And I stand by that. Not a single character you'll look at and be like, oh, well, you looked a little bit different in your Tinder profile. Every single character, the side characters, the villains, the mains, everyone, and especially that blonde. Like, hold up, can we can we get a uh, can we get an enhanced image? Uh, yeah, enhance, enhance, enhance. No, no, go up, go up. Go up. The art is so good that it doesn't even matter what the hell's going on in the story, for me at least. As long as I get to look at pretty people the whole time, I don't care what's happening. It's kind of like when you listen to rap music and the instrumental's like really good, but the lyrics are shit, so you don't even listen to that. That's kind of what it's like, you know? Except the story actually is good though. It's actually interesting. And honestly, if I had the power to copy and acquire any mangaka's art style, I would learn this mangaka's art style, Maizuki Jun. Currently, my art style is um, poorly copying Murata Yusuke, 
but you know it uh, it is what it is anyway getting back on topic kowloon generic romance it's not generic but it is very romantic and it is very kowloonish whatever that means. And if you like sane in romance, this is probably right up your alley. So yeah, give it a shot. Hey guys, welcome to the end of the video. Thanks as always for watching. Make sure to annihilate that like button if you like the video, of course. And maybe just subscribe too, you know? Eh? Have a beautiful day and I'll see y'all later.